I was born to my mom and dad, and they were born to my grandparents, and they in turn were born to my great-grandparents, and they to my great-great-grandparents. But who was born first of all? Or in other words, who was the first human being? People have wondered about this since ancient times, and they have come up with many answers. According to Chinese mythology, it was the goddess Nuwa who created hundreds of humans by molding them out of clay. Those whom she had shaped slowly and carefully became the nobles, and those who had been created sloppily and hurriedly became common men and women. People on an island in the South Pacific believe that the father of all men was Vatia, who was created when a goddess detached a piece of flesh from her right side. The Jewish and Christian religions hold that it was Eve, the first woman, who was born from the side of Adam, the first man. It is interesting to know what these cultures, which created these stories long ago, have to say about the origin of man. Today, though, we explain things a little bit differently. From the study of ancient remains found deep within the Earth, scientists who study these matters, such as paleontologists, base their discoveries on the bones of people who lived very long ago. They have noticed that not all bones are equally old, and some places have older bones than other places. The oldest remains are those found in Africa, which means that it was here where the first human beings lived. Scientists have also noticed that the oldest bones look less and less like the human beings of today. Why? In the course of his journeys, naturalist Charles Darwin found the remains of ancient animals that were very different from modern ones, but that at the same time looked like they could have been their relatives. Could it be that this glyptodon was something like the armadillo's great grandparent? And this 11,000-year-old Celidoterium, a sloth's great-great-grandparent? Darwin hypothesized that species haven't been the same all the time, but that they have changed. This idea is called the theory of evolution, and everything so far indicates that he was right. And even more, this theory fits all the changes seen in animals, plants. And human beings too. Just as every family has its own genealogical tree, every species has its genealogical tree, and that of human beings looks more or less like this. About 150 million years ago, a tiny species of mouse-like animal called Juramea evolved from certain species of reptiles, becoming the ancestor of all kinds of modern mammals, from zebras to dolphins. One of these types of mammals is the primates, which includes monkeys and apes. By the way, the word primate means, <laughs> did you guess, cousin. Fifteen million years ago, Proconsul was a primate which could already see in color and was most likely the ancestor of orangutans and all hominids, gorillas, chimpanzees, and us. Hominids had a larynx, a structure within the throat that enabled them to articulate sounds. Seven million years ago, our ancestors split from the ancestors of chimpanzees. Australopithecus afarensis appeared some three and a half million years ago. Apparently, it was the first of our ancestors which could walk upright. Take a look at the footprints it left on the ground. Do they look like yours? This is Lucy. An Australopithecus that has been reconstructed from remains found in Ethiopia, Africa. Lucy's descendants were very short and had to defend themselves from the fearsome Dinofelis cats. The first Homo, direct relatives of humans, Homo habilis and Homo erectus, were descended from Australopithecus. At this time, approximately two and a half million years ago, our ancestors started using the first tools. Although it had a slightly smaller brain, Homo erectus looked very human-like. 600,000 years ago, the first Homo heidelbergensis, which had a brain almost as big as modern man's and was the common ancestor of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens, appeared. Neanderthals were big, had wide noses, and some of them were red-haired. They lived at the same time as the Cro-Magnon. Ancient humans in Europe and disappeared 25,000 years ago, very likely after interbreeding with them. Homo sapiens appeared some 150,000 years ago. 
If we dressed and groomed them, they wouldn't look much different from our neighbors next door, because we are the same species. But it was until 70,000 years ago that humans took the big leap. We learned to use symbols to communicate with one another, to draw and paint those symbols and to exchange goods with other groups of humans living far away. It was at this time when we invented culture that many think we became truly human. It's difficult to determine who the first true human being was. Was it Lucy, the first primate who walked upright? Or was it the first hominid who built tools? Or a red-haired Neanderthal? It all depends on how we define human being. On the other hand, thanks to the advances in genetics, it sounds reasonable to say that humankind's most recent grandmother lived some 160,000 years ago in Africa. She is known as Mitochondrial Eve, and she probably didn't live alone, but in a community with many other people. It was her children, and her children's children, and the children of her children's children who survived. From all this, we can conclude that all human beings, no matter where we're from, are cousins. Think about it. Curiosamente. Please subscribe to this channel and leave us your comments.